Okay, so um, this will be our second video for position, velocity, and acceleration. And, you know, again, some of you might have some experience from a physics class uh, dealing with position versus time and velocity versus time graphs. Uh, and that's, that's exactly what this is going to look at. Um, so, so the first picture, it represents position, uh, you know, again, along the x-axis um, for, for 10 seconds. And so, you know, again, the motion that we're describing here, very elementary um, compared to what you might study in physics. They're just moving uh, on the x-axis. And so um, just to kind of give you a visualization maybe of what's happening. So I'm going to go ahead and mark some points here uh, on the x-axis, uh, 0 through 4, uh, and then maybe down to negative 1, and then down to negative 2. And, you know, so if I think about um, this this uh, graph, which represents the position of a particle over time. So remember, each of the y values then represents the position. So when I'm looking along the y axis, I'm looking here, the height of each of these points corresponds to where is it at on the number line. So for example, for the first two seconds, it's at position two, just sitting there. It's not moving, so it's just at position two. And then over the next second, it goes down to position, um, you know, it goes down uh, to position uh, zero. So, so like half a second to position one, half a second to position zero. So, so it's down to there. And then it keeps going, right, to position all the way down to negative two. Because again, I'm, I'm thinking about the y values of this position graph as to where is this particle's moving back and forth, right? This particle's just moving back and forth. And then as this goes up at a certain slope, its, its rise is going to go from negative 2 all the way up to 4. So in other words, it's moving from negative 2 all the way up to 4 and then back down to position 0. So, so you know, again, thinking about what the, what the movement of this is, remember it starts at 2 and just stays there for 2 seconds, goes down to negative, oops, sorry, uh, goes down to negative 2 and then goes right back up to four, and then back down to zero. So again, and, you know, thinking about like, well, how many times does this particle change directions? So starting at two, nothing happens. And you go all the way down to negative two. We go back up to four, so there's one change in direction, and back to zero, there's a second change. And so since change um, is referring to like, you know, like change in direction means a change in velocity, because velocity represents direction, um, I change velocity twice. Uh, you know, change the velocity changes twice from positive to negative or negative to positive. So I could say twice. And specifically here at time equals, I think that is, was that four? One, two, three, four. Because I went from a negative velocity to a positive velocity. And also at uh, t equals seven. And I'm already sort of alluding to, well, if this is position, the change in position over time could be represented by velocity, which is the derivative of the slope. So look for where the slopes are changing, negative slopes to positive slopes, or positive slopes to negative slopes. Um, and sometimes people wonder, well, what's happening here? And technically, that's not a change in position, or sorry, change in, in direction, because going nowhere and then going left, is it, you didn't really change directions. You just started off. Okay, so let's go to question two. When is it moving to the left? Well, moving to the left, again, um, would, would indicate like a negative velocity. And on the graph, uh, that would be a negative slope. So when is it a negative slope? Well, from two to uh, four, but then also uh, from seven to 10. I just write that as an interval. Um, and then, you know, it particularly t equals 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right there, what is the velocity? And again, it's going to be equivalent to the slope of that line because this is a position graph. The derivative of position is velocity. So I look at the slope, um, and look, as long as it's linear, like it is, I can actually find it. So it's up 2 over 1, so it's positive 2 inches per second. Now, notice that's a constant velocity. My velocity is constantly 2 uh, inches per second along this entire segment. And so when it's asking for acceleration, well, this time it's asking for acceleration at 3, um, I want to think about acceleration as the change of velocity over time. Well, at time equals 3, 
I'm part of this seg this linear segment here. At time equals three, my velocity isn't changing over time. My velocity is constantly negative two, and the derivative of negative two would be zero. So, so in that case, uh, my acceleration is zero. It's not. There's no change in velocity over time. So it's zero uh, inches per second squared. And that's our measurement for acceleration, change of velocity over time. So we have a per second squared. Okay. And then the next question says, what's the average velocity? For, and then also the average speed. So remember, for average velocity, that's displacement uh, over time. And displacement means final position minus starting position. So final minus starting. And then over time, so that would have been a 10 second interval. So the final position is here. And again, we're thinking about the y values. The final position is zero. Like when I had my, my particle, it started at two, it went down to negative two, up to four, and back to zero. So my final position is zero, and my initial position, remember, was two, because that y value was two. So then I put that in, and I say, okay, so the final position was zero, the starting position was two, divide by 10, because that's how many seconds. So it's negative 2 tenths, which is equal to negative 1 fifth uh, inch per second. Um, and we said in the first video, velocity can be negative. If your overall displacement is negative, your velocity is negative. Okay. Now, average speed, on the other hand, we need to know the total distance. right? So average speed is, well, what's the total distance, whether you went forward or backwards? Let's just add them all up. So total distance over time, which is still 10 seconds. So going back up to here and analyzing, okay, remember we started, oh, there it is, uh, we started at two and then we went down to negative two. So I've traveled four units and then I travel up to four. So that's six more units and then back down to zero. That's four units. So again, just recap that I started at two I traveled down to negative two, so that's four units, up to four, so that's six more units, so now I'm at 10 units, and then back down to zero, that's four more units, so that's 14 units. Um, and, you know, you could also be looking on the y-axis over here, that, you know, from this point down to that point, that's four units, from this point up to this point, that's six units, that's 10, and then from that point down to there, that's four more. So that's 14. So that's another way we can see that, that the total distance is 14 inches over a 10 second period, or like 1.4 inches per second. And that's going to be different than this, simply because um, velocity accounts for moving to the left. This never, like the total distance accounts for, like, it's just always a positive distance. So unless you're always moving to the right, those two will never equal each other. Okay, now the last example is the exact same image, but it's a velocity now. So now all of these heights, I'll say, is represented by velocities. So when I'm analyzing a velocity graph, anything that's above the uh, x-axis, so anything that's up here, that represents positive velocity. All of this region represents things moving to the right because all of their y values are velocity values, um, and, and, and they have positive values. Down here would be negative velocity, so moving to the left. So right away, slope of this line is not telling me velocity. It's the height of it. So up here, I have positive velocity. Just want to remind myself. And down here, it's negative velocity. And again, I might just then say positive velocity, that's moving to the right. Negative velocity, that's moving to the left. So when it asks me, when does it change directions, when do I go from positive to negative when I go from right to left. That would have to mean I'd have to go through zero. So that's right here. Right there, I'm going to change directions. And right here, I'm changing directions because the path of my velocity you know, goes from above the x-axis to below. So twice. And even though it's twice on the other graph, where we're looking is different, right? So here, I'm looking at when time equals t equals 3 and also when t equals five, so twice. Okay. Now, I could anticipate there might be a change here, but I don't know what happens after 10. It just stopped. 
So unless I know for sure it goes into that territory, I don't know necessarily change directions. It could have just stopped. Now, I like that I highlighted this because look at this. When is it moving to the left? Well, it's moving to the left when it has a negative velocity, right? Again, I want to associate that. And since this is already a velocity graph, I don't need to find the slope of anything. I just need to look at it. Where is it? It's underneath the x-axis. Great. So from 3 to 5, it's moving to the left. Okay. Now, acceleration is the change of velocity over time. Acceleration is the derivative of velocity. And since I'm visually seeing this velocity graph, then I know that the derivative or the slope of the tangent at 3 would represent is acceleration. So let's find where 3 is. 1, 2, 3. Oh, it's even circled there, right? So think about what's the slope at that instant. Like right there, it has a slope of negative 2. And it's negative 2 inches per second squared because it's an acceleration measurement. Okay. Now, let's look at, um, you know, 3.5. So is the particle speeding up at 3.5? So um, 3.5 seconds. I know I kind of cleared that, and it kind of made it look awkward. I'm sorry. So 3.5, 1, 2, 3. So right here, right at that instant, um, is it speeding up, slowing down, or stopped? And remember, for something to be speeding up, the signs have to match. The velocity and the acceleration signs have to match. Slowing down, they're opposites. So velocity, so V of 3.5 is, um, well, look, at it's below the x-axis, so the velocity is a negative value. I mean, it's probably, it's actually, like, looks like it's negative 1 because its height is negative 1. But the fact of the matter, it's, it's not, it's negative. And that's part of a negative slope. And since the slope of velocity line is acceleration, the acceleration at 3.5 is also negative. So this is how I'm going to justify, show or tell that they're the same signs. Hey, velocity and acceleration are both negative. So I know it's speeding up. How do I know it's speeding up? Because I could say V of T and A of T, so the velocity and the acceleration, are both negative when T is 3.5. So that's how I knew it was speeding up. And it's speeding up to the left because they're both negative. Um, and then it says, is the particle speeding up, slowing down, or stopped at 7.5? So now let's move this particle to 7.5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7.5. So right there. Okay. So I'm in the yellow territory. So that tells me the velocity is positive. So at least I know the velocity, V of 7.5, is positive. And then... Um, it's part of a negative slope though, right? So the, velo the derivative of velocity, which is acceleration, so A of 7.5 is negative. These signs don't match. So because the signs don't match, I automatically know it's slowing down. And I could just say, um, how do I know it's slowing down? Because V of T is positive, so the velocity function is positive, yet A of T is negative um, when t is 7.5. So that tells me I'm slowing down. And if it ever asks, like, what direction is the slowing down? Remember, direction is determined by velocity. Because my velocity is positive, it's slowing down, but it's still slow going to the right, just going slower to the right. Okay. And then the last thing is, like, it says, is it possible to find the distance traveled from a velocity graph? The answer is yes. And again, it depends on some of your physics background, but you can find the distance traveled. And um, an easy way to think about this is looking at just a constant velocity. So, and I always think about driving a car, right? Let's say you're driving a car 60 miles per hour for three hours. Well, if you drew the velocity graph of a constant 60 miles per hour for three hours, so one hour, two hour, three hours. You just have a, this horizontal line. Um, but 60 miles per hour for three hours, I know I could say, oh, that's just 60 times three. 60 miles per hour over three hours, I would have traveled 180 miles. But that 180 miles could also be represented on a velocity graph 
by looking at what shape and how much space that shape takes up in terms of area. Because this rectangle would be a three unit length there and a 60 unit length there. And three times 60 is 180. So an area model allows us to find the distance traveled. So I would definitely say yes, um, use the area formed. And that's really nice because now when you are not moving at a constant velocity, um, you can still find it by just calculating the area. So for example, and, and I'll, you know, I know the question didn't ask this, but we can certainly look here, right? For example, if I want to know, well, how much distance was traveled, like from here going, uh, you know, we're speeding up to the right and slowing back down to the right. Like how much distance was traveled from five seconds to nine seconds? Well, I can just calculate this area here of this triangle. That triangle's area will represent the total distance traveled um, in that amount of time. And so it's if I think about, well, what are the dimensions? It's one, two, three, four, five units long and one, two, three, four units high. So the area of that triangle area would be one half five times four, which is 10. And so that would tell me that in that five second interval, it would have gone a total of 10 inches. And the, obviously the velocity is changing over time. So, you know, so, but it doesn't matter how, like how fast you were going during that, that interval, it's just total time, I'm sorry, total distance that was traveled and that was 10 inches. Now, moving forward, we're going to spend some more time on this area and, and thinking about, well, what if that area existed underneath the x-axis? All of a sudden, now that area um, is, has a negative value, and that just means, oh, it's your distance that you move to the left. Um, and talking about that as displacement. So, so um, the, you know, again, like vo position of velocity acceleration, you might have a, a background with physics, but also you should know that this isn't on our, our, our upcoming quiz, this is moving, like this is kind of looking ahead at the next section. Um, still do the homework this weekend, take a look at that, um, you know, and check Canvas. And then we, this is where we will be also spending some time the day after the quiz as well.